I felt like you could have really expanded the witching hour, the book into two seasons. You could have done it in two seasons and really get a feel of this legacy. Hey everyone, welcome back to Kenna Cinema. I'm Amanda, otherwise known as AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Today I will be reviewing the AMC Plus show, The Mayfair Witches, and I am kind of disappointed with it. And I know that I shouldn't start a review saying I'm disappointed with it, but I'm very disappointed with it because Anne Rice's novel of The Witching Hour is absolutely fantastic. And it all comes down to the way that she structured that book. Now, if you did not read Anne Rice's The Witching Hour, the book is very dense. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of detail. I think my favorite aspect about it is the fact that she changes perspectives throughout the book to get a different side of the characters and the legacy tied to them. I think that was really important to kind of gauge the character interactions later on when they do meet. And I think that having a chapter dedicated to Rowan Mayfair and her life with her stepmom and her stepdad and then switching over to Michael Curry in the book. So Michael Curry in the book is changed to Cyprian Grieve in the Mayfair Witches in the show. I don't know why they did a name change that was just something so odd to me. I didn't I didn't really like that, but Michael Curry has powers as well and then he joins the Telemasca which is basically this group of people who have followed the Mayfair witches for centuries upon centuries. They keep documents, they look from the shadows to see what had happened to them in the past because the Mayfair witches have a long, long line. And the beauty of the witching hour by Anne Rice is that she goes through all of the Mayfair witches because there's only one who's chosen and it's from the very beginning. So it starts off with like the first witch of Suzanne and then she has a kid and then she has a kid and then she has a kid. So that has been like passed down since like I think the 16th century where witches really, they got burned at the stake. They didn't care. So it started with that. And then there's the devil known as Lasher that kind of connects himself to these witches because he wants to walk the earth as like a human. He doesn't want to be a spirit that has to work through these women. But the whole point of Anne Rice's witching hour is the fact that Lasher essentially, you know, charms them, seduces them, and also abuses them, which we see in the book, and does things against their will and it's really tough to read sometimes because you think that there's this like devilishly handsome de like demon, you know, that's seducing this young woman and, you know, to take her power. And it's all about power dynamics in The Witching Hour, which I found really interesting. And it's a bit of a hard read, especially when Lasher is a bit aggressive and Jack Houston plays Lasher in the show. So they, the book does an extremely like good job in detailing the past witches and understanding that these women did not have a choice, but Rowan Mayfair has a choice because she is the most powerful witch, which we find out later in the book that she is the 13th witch. And they explain that in the show that she can lift the veil between Lasher in the underworld, essentially, and then reality. So she has the power to do that, but she holds on to her power. And the fact that Lasher can serve her instead of the other way around with all of the witches. So you get so much more detail in the book as per usual. Like, why wouldn't you get detail in the book? But I do think that the show itself did miss the mark a bit with the Mayfair witches. I did not like the structure of this. I didn't like that they changed certain aspects around. I didn't like that they added new characters just to show how powerful Rowan can be. So I think that starting with Deirdre made sense. I understand that they started with Deirdre, who is the biological mother of Rowan Mayfair. In order to protect Rowan, Carlotta Mayfair, who's the aunt of Deirdre Mayfair, 
took her away at a very young age and gave her to Ellie Mayfair, who is a distant cousin who's completely removed from all of this in a different city. They did not live in New Orleans and instead they went to California. Carlotta's like, we have to protect this this young one from Lasher because she didn't want the same cycle to happen all over again. So Rowan goes to a different city entirely, grows up, becomes a neurosurgeon, but she still has these witchy powers that she doesn't quite know what to do with doesn't know why it happens but it's the simple fact that like when she gets angry she can't control her anger and it comes through in her powers where she's able to kill someone instantly and we see little snippets of that i'm not saying they did a terrible job i'm just saying that they could have done it in a way that was a bit more clearer and they had a bit more clarity in regards to her lineage and how she discovered her powers. But they also made this more witchcraft heavy, which that's not really what the book is about. It's more about you know humanity and that's what Rowan struggles with as well because she's the most human If you really think about it, she's a neurosurgeon. She helps people. She's using her powers for good, essentially, when she's working in the hospital. So it's kind of like that moral weight of the underworld, the supernatural, and how that ties into the black and white mindset. So that's what the book is supposed to be about. It's also supposed to be about women making decisions and women making choices. And the Mayfair witches didn't have the strength that Rowan has to kind of break this cycle with Lasher. So I think that the book again went back, did chap like big chunks of chapters that were dedicated to certain members of the Mayfair witches. Different cousins would get married and, you know, have babies in order to keep the bloodline clean. And that's why you have so many Mayfairs from all over the place because they just wanted to keep the witches and the warlocks, if you want to call them, all together and not have any outside interference, which would be the Telemasca. I understand all of that. They did explain it in the Mayfair Witches, but I do think going back and forth to Susanna as a cold open, and then you get to like the fourth or fifth episode and you see that Lasher goes to help Susanna and they are linked because of the necklace, this emerald necklace. And I feel like that flashback was just placed way too late in the series for it to make sense and why he's connected to Rowan in the same way. I think they tried to emulate the structure of what Anne Rice did in the novel, and it just didn't work in an eight-episode series. I feel like you needed maybe 10 episodes. You needed to have episodes where it was like fully based on how Lasher started because they barely scratched the surface with all of these characters. And I know that you want longevity, you want more seasons, and I completely understand that. But it's the simple fact that you're not giving these characters enough time to develop, to actually have audiences understand the gravity of the situation. You could have made like a feminist piece on this with Rowan Mayfair and you're just using throwaway lines to kind of say that I'm keeping my power I'm keeping you know myself in check and he's like serving me and blah 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 like it's a couple of lines like that but you don't really see it because all Lasher ends up doing with Rowan is seducing her the entire time and she's completely powerless and I understand that happens in the book but she voluntarily tells him what she wants There are moments where she does want to talk to Lasher and she does want to get to know him and understand what she has to do and understand the power as well. So I think that comes to the point where you took the what you thought the bones of the book was and then you made a completely different series out of it. So I I I think that they didn't focus on the relationship between Grieve and Rowan, which is the big aspect in the book between Michael and Rowan. It's a big, big aspect. You almost don't care for the two of them. You're more interested in Lasher because the focus was on the witchcraft instead of Rowan's humanity with Michael Curry. That's why at the end of this, when when Grieve, who's the same as Michael Curry, comes in and is like, that's my child. That's my baby. Like This is supposed to be our family. I felt absolutely nothing because we don't spend enough time 
with the two of them. It's just like, I don't know, it, it got lost. There's a lot of things that got lost in the Mayfair Witches. I think that they could have done a bit more with the past in having a parallel to the future. They only did that about twice when Rowan was coming into herself, but I think that they could have done more flashbacks and use the flashbacks a bit differently than they did. I, I think this was like a miss. It missed the mark for me, unfortunately. There are a lot of things that just felt like excess that you would put in a television show. I think the involvement of Tessa was just completely absurd. I think the Reddit users having a forum against witches didn't make any sense because they're still trying to modernize it. They're putting like Rowan in today, like present day. And I think that incorporating a modern version of what people would do today to raise a stink about witchcraft and have forums and have people meeting each other. I think that that was just an odd choice. Like, I know you want to modernize it, but the best shows, like, I'm honestly going to bring up the originals. I think the originals did a fantastic job in New Orleans. And then highlighting the legacy of witches and vampires and, and werewolves. I think they did a really good job with that compared to what the Mayfair witches did. I think even it being seductive, it wasn't as seductive as Anne Rice writing it in the novel either. That wasn't even a draw at the same time. So I think that if they could have started with Suzanne as the OG witch and work towards the lineage and work like, and kind of like work backwards of what the book did, it would have worked because going back and forth, that's where you miss it. Like if the first season was just about like each, you could have done an episode each of the Mayfair witches, each of them that had to deal with Lasher. You could have done something like that or condense it, like the more important, more powerful witches. You could have done like maybe episodes one to three, you could have focused on like Suzanne and like the early years. Then you could have gone to like Mary Beth and Antha and Deirdre. And then like the last two episodes or last three episodes could have gone to Rowan and having the same things happen over and over again. I think that would have been stronger. I think the death of Deirdre came a bit too early in order for Rowan to move back to the Mayfair house. I understand that you want to fast track it, but then if you're banking on a season two, what are we doing? Are you doing it by book? Because then if you're doing the witching hour and then the sequel, and then you have the spinoff of what Lasher is, there's a whole book with Lasher. It just doesn't make sense to start it where you did and then end it where you did it is a sort of cliffhanger, which obviously that's what happens in the book, that cliffhanger. But I felt like you could have really expanded the witching hour the book into two seasons you could have done it in two seasons and really get a feel of this legacy and i think that's where they missed it you don't have a connection with rowan everything feels really empty and I don't, I can't understand why. I think Alexandra Daddario did a fantastic job with what she had to do. I really did see Rowan in her. I think it was great casting. It is getting a second season. So I guess people are really vibing with it. That's fine. But as a book reader, like I was really disappointed in it. I do think that the book is 10 times better because of the way it was structured. The structure is always important when you're doing adaptations that have these flashbacks, that have these callbacks and parallels to these characters and their situations. So I think that for me, the series as a whole, I'm sitting at like a two and a half out of five. I know that sounds so bad, but I was really disappointed. I was looking forward to this, you know, to this series because of Alexandra Daddario, I think that she's a really great actress. I think she's, you know, she's just getting different roles that don't really showcase how wonderful she is. And I think that the Mayfair Witches did a good job in showcasing that. I just think that structurally, the writing just did not do it for me. They missed a lot of things. And if you didn't read the book, you're not going to understand it as well. And that's fine. If you want to read up on it or read the book, that's perfectly fine. I think that other shows have done the legacy of vampires. Even the Vampire Diaries did it extremely well. You know, and then you look at it like the Vampire Diaries, the original, all that stemmed from somewhere and that stemmed from Anne Rice. So 
I think that doing her justice with the Mayfair witches was essential and they just did not do that. I know interview with the vampire on AMC plus is worth the watch. So good. But the Mayfair witches just it was a miss for me. So let me know if you read Anne Rice's novel of the witching hour. Um, maybe our opinions differ. I'm just really disappointed with this series. I may watch season two and see where it goes. Maybe that'll help season one. I don't know. But if you didn't read the book and you watched the series, let me know your thoughts. I know that people that go in blind have a completely different perspective on it and that's totally fine. Let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed it. If you were a book reader, if you weren't a book reader, I'd like to know in the comments below if you agree with me or if I'm being too harsh on the Mayfair witches. Also, my full review of comparing both the book and the film will be over at Mods Book Club. And I will put the link below because I read this book to write for Mod Garrett and put it on that website because we have our fun little book club and it's so fun. So I have been trying to read a bit more and watch more. And I think that diving into the witching hour, which is almost like a thousand pages, and then watching an eight episode series to reflect the thousand pages, it's tough to get through. It's really tough to get through. So my full written review will be up on there as soon as possible and I'll drop the link below. But if you guys enjoyed this review, please like and subscribe. You can always follow me over at AMX ND Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. I'll catch you guys next time. Keep watching movies.